Thank you very much for joining this session. My name is Andrea Koskai and I'm the student leader for the Celebration of World Cultures show and exhibition of international students. There is one area of exclusion that we really want to address in this showcase and that is the representation of international community. I hope you enjoy discovering the diverse pieces of these talented humans and the performances coming up. I just want you to keep at the back of your mind this issue of representation. How much of these people's cultures did you have the chance to discover in classes, events, lectures, or your personal time? We'll come back at the end and have a discussion about it. Try to bring up suggestions for that. I will also link all of the art pieces of the participants as well as their performances and a Google form that you can complete to leave further suggestions. Thank you once again for joining and I hope you enjoy. Have fun! Xiao Ma is a second term student from China who will be showing you her photography project on the coronavirus. Hello everybody, my project is about the coronavirus. It relates to more of how people feel and um, how emotions were brought up by the virus. And my intention of this project emphasizes what different attitude can change people's emotions towards social issues that got brought up by the virus. And I think when it comes to human issues, love is often the best resolution. I wish everyone to be kind to each other and wash your hands. Thank you. This is my poem that I wrote for coronavirus in January 24th, 2020. The title of the poem is What am I thinking while listening to 21st century schizomen? Plague. She calls it a plague. Help us, it's a plague. Disease spreads wildly, end of the world. Nobody else cares. People living their lives and enjoying the sun while the other side of the ocean is sinking, collapsing. Zombies walking on the streets. Only few zombies lived on the streets. Other zombies hide themselves in the houses. Zombies eat zombies. Humans cry at humans. The blood of extravagance runs in the upper class while they laugh, waste money, nice haircut, gold, silver, beautiful faces on the telescreen. Yet no one cares about those dying in the hospitals, dying at their houses, escaping without dignity losing sanity, ditching morality, ugly dying faces, ugly people. Nobody cares about ugly people. People listen to bands like King Crimson, who my online friend is praying for her new boyfriend, whom she can only chat online. He's been, on, he's been locked in his city, Wuhan, locked down in one night like the citizens don't deserve to feel attached, like we don't even deserve to know the truth, like we can't even hold on to each other because we live in lies. What about lies? Lying you care. Lying this is a home for you, but it never is, never will be. People don't care, other people cares about themselves. And then there's the doctors who are willing to put their bloody fingerprints onto the contract paper. They are scared as well. What makes them want to do that? We can only help others to a certain extent, right? I want to believe there are still goodness in humans, so I hold on to them. I'm high on caffeine, high on King Crimson, high in America while people in my country are dying. Personal struggles somehow don't matter at this point. I'm going to care. I want to do something. I don't believe in money. I don't trust systems. There is nobody I can turn myself to. It's a hopeless path. What can I really do to help? To truly give myself away and to accomplish love. Does love still matter in front of living? Nobody cares. Nobody cares how wealthy you are. 
We just all want to live. Please let them li live. World War Three is not war. It's human simply dying. When nature turns against us, it's going to be the ultimate tragedy. Why do it? Why are looking for suffering when there's nothing to suffer? Because we want to prove we once lived. Here's my prayer for today, for our future, the permanent ending of this ridiculous, nostalgious, rotten life. Are humans born to live a nasty life, God? If we are, let the nastiness be beautiful. Let us die tragically, beautifully, in remembrance. To accomplish your thoughtful revenge, let us think. Don't talk about living. Let us think while suffer. Therefore, accomplish the ultimate beauty of being a part of the humanity, and still have hope while seeing through the ugliness of everything. Amen. Aisha Bashir is a fourth-term student from Pakistan and will be presenting her video work as well as one of her animations. This piece was inspired by a Persian love story called Layla Majnu. It is a tragic love story about a poet and his love, Layla Binti Mehdi. The style of the animation was inspired by Islamic imagery and miniature paintings. The poem and narration are by Hushtang Iftihaj, who is an Iranian poet. This is a short experimental piece on familial disconnection homesickness and longing. This piece is a compilation of voice messages sent to me by my mother. It deals with issues that come from being away from home. It portrays how mother are worried and always concerned for their children, how habitual we are as human beings, and how hard it is to communicate with distance. The piece includes voice messages sent to me by my mother last year. The messages from my mom always start with repeated questions and a tone that almost feels robotic. The length of these voice messages are almost always 28 seconds. The audio is accompanied by cool visuals that convey emptiness and remoteness. I made this piece when I was going through a lot last year and to me this piece was part of the healing process and I will really hope that it does the same to you as audience. Enjoy. Jun Kang is a four-term student from South Korea, and she will be showing her animation. To put it in her words, this is a final project she did for her animation class. They had to make an animation work based on the poem they chose. She used both digital drawing and stop-motion animation for this project. The poem chosen, Pink Sugar Elephant by Jenny Lee, is in Korean. She was hesitant to use it at the beginning since it was not translated into English and she doubted her ability to convey the meaning slash feeling of the poem through the animation. However, she was inspired by the poem and finally decided to use Lee's poem. She asked Dabin Jong, another Korean student in Bennington, to translate the poem into English since she studies literature and asked a friend of hers who is currently studying in China to record the narration for her. This means a lot to her because it is difficult for her to make art work with her countrymates here at Bennington since there aren't many of them and also because she could share the beauty of the Korean language with the Bennington community. Samuel de Sousa is a second term student from Venezuela and he will be showing you one of his video works. My piece is a remake of Bad Bunny's music video Solo de Mi, which I made for my introduction to video class. The video deals with the theme of domestic violence and was released after overwhelming cases of feminicides in many Latin American countries like Mexico or Argentina. This is surprising for a reggaeton artist seeing how patriarchal the music genre has historically been, but the original Solo de Mi music video is still falls short particularly in the second half, where it portrays a male-dominated party and gives a submissive role to the actress that dominated the first half of the video by lip-syncing the lyrics of the song on a stage. And that's why I decided to radically change the second half and make it more queer and more women dominated. Apolline Tardy is a four-term student from France and she will be showing you one of her art pieces. Where do you feel at home? What a question it is to ask a nomad. Is home a place, a person, a belief? I don't have a favorite place. I have a favorite house, cuisine, and climate from different places. I don't have a favorite person either. 
I spend time with people for the feelings they bring up in me, for the particular things they understand, for the experiences I want to create with them. I'm an artist who finds purpose in her spirituality, poetry in the second law of dy thermodynamics, inspiration in, is art really my home? They tell me home is when you give a hug and your heart starts to glow. That it's a warm blanket and tea after a cold day. It's my beau's eyes when he tells me I feel your love. But it can't be. The question is not where do you feel at home, but when? When do I feel at home? In the cradle of my grandparents' pool as I sigh down through the cold steel tiles and glare up at the sky. I found it in the Caribbean Sea after trekking down lionfish for three hours when I raised my head and noticed it was raining. What my home is, it's when I forget who I am and why I'm here, because I understand that it doesn't matter. It's when I start paying attention to what isn't, including space and time. It's not reassurance and happiness. It's an arousing perplexity and joy. Home is when I look up at Snell's window. Alyssa Pong is a second term student from Malaysia who will be showing you her video work. I don't know what to say is all in all a collaborative project. It is the manifestation of one's process of listening of yearning to understand another, even when the words escape us. The stories you'll hear are those of Elena, Marta, Sagarika, Samuel, and my own grandfather, told through their voices and the bodies of Danielle, Emma, Runal, Ciso, and Olivia, as well as my own. I cannot be more grateful for the honesty and heart shown by each and every one of them. It is my hope that we might continue to truly listen to one another, even when we are unsure of what to say. Andrea Koskai is a fourth term student from Romania who will be showing her video work as well as one of her podcasts. Lovely is a video piece that I made last year for my class and it is a critical piece I would say that focuses on the transition from communism to democracy that Romania, my country of origin, has faced, um, particularly focusing on the um, idea of sexual harassment and how uh, this is really not taken seriously in Romania and how it can affect many, many women um, as well as men. So I hope it can give you a little bit of insight to the perspective I wanted to portray. Whose Choice is My Choice is a podcast I made in my first year here for a radio class and it is focused on the topic of abortion taking a cultural, religious, personal perspective on this, um, introducing the um, situation of abortion when it was legal in the communism time in Romania, how it is viewed nowadays in the States, a discussion about an organization called Catholics for Choice, as well as the importance that Planned Parenthood has for um, pro-choice supporters. Jade Lopez Guevara is an eighth term student from El Salvador and she will be showing you her writing pieces. My name is Jade Lopez Guevara. I'm from El Salvador. And um, my work that I've chosen for this workshop is um, a ser uh, series of three of my poems and two stories that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, one of them is called The Receptionist. And it's... Uh, uh, it's meant to be an exploration of uh, the relationship between life and death and the cultural relationship of trauma. The second one is called Roach and it's about um, what happens when you have uh, no money, no nowhere to go to, you're in a, in a foreign unknown city and yeah. They're both, uh, more of my work deals with these social issues.